Before leaving for the Middle East, President Biden showed off stunning new pictures from the Webb Space Telescope, orbiting a million miles from Earth, showing images from 13 billion years ago. We talked earlier today with the man responsible for the NASA project, Gregory Robinson, who took it over when it was in trouble. And we started with whether he ever had any doubts it would work. So when I came in, uh, yes, uh, the program was having some challenges. Um, I had no doubts that we would succeed, uh, primarily because we had a, a, an incredibly smart and resilient team already working this. Uh, when I came on, the, the telescope half with the mirror and the instruments were already done. They completed testing at, at Johnson Space Center after development at, at Goddard. And the spacecraft, and including the Sun Shield out of North of Grumman, were mostly done and getting pretty close to their environmental testing prior to integration. So, a lot of good work had already gone on. Uh, we didn't have to really do any more design work or any manufacturing. Uh, I was really just completing all the testing, fixing a few issues, getting it integrated and, and shipping it and launching it. Uh, so I had little doubt. Uh, however, we still have to get it over the goal line. Uh, sometimes in the red zone, it gets harder to score and it was certainly getting harder. And of course, budget and schedule uh, were a really big deal at the time. So, so you got it over the goal line without a doubt. We've all seen some of those amazing images now, really gripping images. At the same time, one question I have is we have the Hubble Space Telescope been out there for a little over 30 years now. Uh, is this different in degree from Hubble or is it different in kind? Is it going to do things altogether different from what Hubble allowed us to do? Oh, yes, it's going to do a lot more than, than Hubble is doing. And Hubble has been amazing for over 30 years. Uh, and at the time when Hubble came along, it was by far the state of the art, and, and it showed us a lot about our universe that we had no clue about. And of course, Webb, with its infrared capability, large 21-foot mirror, um, and extremely powerful instruments, uh, it, it's showing us a lot more than Hubble could ever show us, including looking at some of the same areas of, of the universe. It's just a lot clearer uh, because of the infrared. And of course, one of the big things uh, we're looking for, and one of the reasons we, we built Webb, was to look back uh, as close as possible to the to the formation of the universe, um, you know, one, two, three hundred million years after the Big Bang. And based on what we're seeing today, the capability is there, so I think we'll get there. Uh, so, we, as you said, uh, Hubble has uh, been up there for something over 30 years. How long is this supposed to last? And over that period of time, whatever it is. What are the, I guess I would say, deliverables for the scientists? Because this really is a science project. Yes. Uh, so we, we, we built all of our missions, except for technology missions, uh, for science. Uh, no different for web. Uh, so we know we have a, a enough fuel to last 20 years, 20 plus years. And that's our uh, primary uh, limiting factor at, at consumable. Uh, and, and of course, we, we're looking at many different areas of science uh, with astrophysics. And in the first year of science that we call cycle one, uh, we have uh, several hundred science teams from all over the world. And they're going to be looking at many different areas of, of astrophysics. Of course, deep field, you've heard a lot about exoplanets. Uh, they'll be looking at black holes. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, I think we will have uh, numerous discoveries. And, and we certainly will create uh, questions that we haven't even thought of. So as you said, we're going to be taking a look at black holes. I don't think we've seen those quite yet. When do you think we might see those? And by the way, are we looking for planets outside our solar system? We're looking for stars and galaxies. And of course, many of these have uh, these stars have planets around them. So yes, we will be able to see them. And then certainly for exoplanets, we'll be looking specifically at exoplanets that um, certainly Webb will find some, but other missions prior to Webb, like TESS, uh, Kepler, uh, they found uh, thousands of exoplanets and there are many more to come. So yes, uh, Webb will look at those in particular. We will also look uh, within our own solar system and looking away from, from the sun uh, going out to the outer part of our solar system. We'll look at planets like, uh, like Mars and Jupiter and Uranus and others. Uh, so we can we can uh, peek in there pretty close, closer than we've ever been able to do. Uh, so the technology is amazing. So that first year of science is actually planned. That those science teams have planned the whole year, so they know exactly what they're planning to do uh, in that first year. And sometime in a few months, we'll start the the cycle two portion of that, which will start a year from now. 
Uh, you were, I think, somewhat modest in saying you came in to maybe fix a few things in the execution, get it over the goal line. Uh, the accounts indicate that really the, the project was in some difficulty. Looking back on it now, what did we learn about project manage management at NASA or even more broadly in government from what we went through with the web? Yeah, so project management at NASA has been very good. Uh, when you go back many years, uh, we've, we've delivered on most of our commitments. Uh, these large, complex flagship missions, we call them, uh, they're tough. We're, we're doing something that's never been done before. Oftentimes, new technologies, many new technologies, and Webb has 10, which is unheard of. Uh, it's, it's hard to, to estimate what it's going to cost. It's hard to estimate the exact schedule like you do on, on some other missions. Uh, but we, we tend to always deliver. And certainly, we get the sides. Uh, we, we, there's some areas for improvement, and one is uh, better cost estimating and uh, getting our requirements right up front and also maturing technology early on. Uh, let's talk about you just for a moment, because uh, I've read about your background, and it, uh, if I can characterize it as is somewhat modest. Uh, it's really a success story, an American success story, if I may say so. What can we do to make sure there's another Gregory Robinson in the pipeline? Well, there are a whole lot of Gregory Robinsons uh, running around out there. Uh, with different names from a different mother. So one of the, one of the things we have to do um, to to find uh, other Greg Robinsons or make sure we nurture them is to to put all of the support that we can in the pipeline uh, in, in elementary school through high school and and get more ready and motivated to go into the sciences and, and the technical areas. And of course, as we we get into the workforce. We certainly have to do better recruiting and, and I would say development and, and promotions. Because access, doing something uh, one or two times, that's really where you get your experience. And if you don't get the opportunity to do some of those things, then, then you don't create Greg Robinson. And finally, Mr. Robinson, as you know, there's been some controversy around the name Webb. Uh, James Webb was a, an early administrator of NASA during the Apollo years back in the 60s. And there's some questions now about the extent to which he stood up for LGBTQ. Is there any prospect of renaming it? Uh, well, currently, the, uh, there's no, no plans to rename it. Uh, the administrator has made that decision. Uh, and I have no idea how that will go in the future. But, but currently, there's no, there are no plans to rename it. Okay, well, mainly congratulations. It's an amazing success story. We're really enjoying watching those, fo those photographs. Thank you. It's been a great ride.